everybody. We're here today um, because of so many tragedies in our community, um, because we're tired with the way that prosecutors continue to lie, the uh, police continue to lie, and so many of our loved ones from our communities are wrongfully incarcerated, wrongfully arrested, and the system and the status quo continues to protect prosecutors and police in a way that is so, so harmful for our communities. Um, Ava DuVernay's uh, documentary that recently came out has draw, redrawn attention to the case of the Central Park Five, and it shines the light on Linda Fairstein, a prosecutor in Manhattan, DA Cy Vance's office just over there. And we know that this is not a rotten apple. This is not a once in a generation case. This is unfortunately endemic of a system that is rotten to its core and needs full transformation. And so we're here today, a bunch of us from various elected officials' office, people running to change the status quo, community organizations to demand that uh, the city opens up an investigation into Linda Fairstein's history, her cases, so that nothing, that the things that happened to the Central Park Five never happen again, and we go back and repair the past harms that have hurt people in our communities. So to kick things off, we're gonna bring up our city's public advocate, Jamani Williams. Thank you everybody uh, for coming out. Thank you for inviting me today. Um, I recently sent a letter to DA Cy Vance asking to investigate all the cases that Linda Fairstein was involved with, especially those cases where DNA was not found. We are trying to make this a situation where anyone can grab it. We're making it as easy as possible. We sent that letter out six days ago uh, my hope is that it somehow didn't get lost in the mail because we haven't had a response yet. And so we're going to resend the letter just to ensure that the DA received it. Uh, in the meantime, people and organizations across the country are listening to the demand. Uh, we made several other calls for uh, Ms. Letterer, who also works uh, in the DA's office, to be fired. We ask that she no longer be working at Columbia University. We also asked that many of the publishers and book industry no longer sell Ms. Feinstein's work or push her books. Right. We, are, we were glad to hear uh, that she was dropped from many awards, um, she was dropped from many um, nonprofit boards. She had awards rescinded and she was dropped by her publisher. But yes. we do, by one of them, we do need to look into her cases because it's not about her as much as any potential victim. I do always want to lift up Miss Mealy, uh, who was the person who was raped and left for dead in that Central Park. We also have to lift her up, but we also have to lift up the other victims that were created by Miss Fairstein, including the exonerated five, including other women who were raped by the person who was left on the street because she decided to use bigotry nice. and the focus of just needing a win. Not only raped, but also killed. Linda Fairstein just called when they see us an outright fabrication. And if there's anyone who knows about outright fabrication, it's Linda Fairstein. I, I'm, I never cease to be amazed, just to be clear. She's not saying this is the information that we had at the time. She's not saying that I wish we had done something better. She is basically claiming that the exonerated five did something. She's claiming that they are still guilty. This is the mindset that caused them to be where they are today in the first place. This is the reason that anybody in public service should be joining us to ask for these same demands, especially that a Manhattan DA at least reopen the cases where there are no DNA evidence. I'm very excited that there is a DA candidate here, Ms. Tiffany Caban, showing where her support lies. We know there is a big DA Queens race happening right now. I know Mr. Lasik received some contributions from Mr. Fairstein. I would like to hear from all 
of the DA candidates in Queens about where they are on these demands. And to be clear, the demands are that CA, uh, DA Cy Vance reopen all of the cases that Linda Feistein was in charge of, particularly those where there was no DA evidence, to fire Liz uh, Letterer and to have her fired from Columbia University. Those are things that you can ask for now, particularly if you are running for DA. And I will say to the Manhattan DA, there is an election coming up. Mm -hmm. yep. What we're asking for is not hard. Anyone who believes in justice, yep. based on where this is right now, it's no longer a question. It's about leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Jamani. All right, next up, we're going to have from Vocal New York, Roger Clark. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. I know firsthand what it is to be convicted off of lies and, 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 and misinformation. Because back in 1996, I was convicted off of lies and misinformation. And I stand today still convicted once you show the prosecutors to prove that, that, um, that the information was incorrect. They find every tool in their, in, in, in their, in their book to try to dissuade whatever you found. So I'm asking, it, it is not right for nobody. Like the way the trial is supposed to be about the truth. It's a truth seeking mechanism. It shouldn't be about lies. So prosecutors, police, and witnesses, or even the victim, they should not include lied on material issue because that, that just goes against what a trial is supposed to be about. This is why what I'm, I'm also with Jomani that we should hold Linda Fairstein accountable. And not only her, there are hundreds, there were hundreds of bad assistant district attorney yep. throughout the decades in New York State. And we need, there is a lot of victims that you all don't know about, you know, and we need, we need, we need legislation to try to fix this problem. If somebody was convicted off a lie, the conviction should be removed. If somebody was convicted off a, off a pressure or whatever, if anything inappropriate happened, we should be able to get, get that person where he was before the, the misconduct happened. This is why I'm also with this group calling for justice. We need to be a fierce city. We cannot be mean and no criminal. A criminal, criminal minded. We need district attorney that's gonna look at things the right way. Yes, if somebody do something wrong and you have the evidence, you hold them accountable. But you don't add to, if you don't have enough, if you fall short of the evidence, you don't add stuff and lie in order to get the person convicted. That's right. That's With right. that, That's right. I'm, That's right. I'm, I'm out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Um, next up, we're excited to have somebody who's been on the other side of Manhattan prosecutors as a public defender, and now she's um, running for the district attorney in Queens. That's Tiffany right. Galan. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. My name is Tiffany Caban, and I am a public defender. I've spent the last seven years just up the street at 100 Center fighting the injustices of our district attorney's office. And Corey Wise, Youssef Salam, Kevin Richardson, Raymond Santana, and Antron McRae are survivors of state-sanctioned violence, pure and simple. The men known as the Central Park Five and their family suffered immense injustice and irreparable harm at a, the hands of a system that was constructed and built to criminalize and break black and brown bodies and low-income communities. Yes, yes. They and others who have been subjected to immoral, unethical, illegal conduct at the hands of former DA Morgenthau and ADA Fairstein deserve the truth to come to light. That's why we are all calling for DA Vance to appoint an independent investigator into Morgenthau's role in the Central Park Five case, yes. Yes. to re-examine and investigate all of ADA Fairstein's prior and previous cases, and to pursue appropriate action to rectify cases of wrongful conviction. That's right, that's right. As a public defender, I know 
the central role that prosecutors play in driving mass incarceration through overcharging, over prosecuting, and using incarceration as a first rather than a last resort. And that culture, that culture of convictions at all costs, does not keep our community safer. That's right. What it has done is drive racial disparities and worsened instability in already vulnerable communities. So it starts today with demanding and calling for the opening of an independent investigation, and it continues going forward with commitments to retroactive review units so that we make sure we continue to be committed to rectifying these harms. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, next up, we want to bring up somebody who has felt immense personal pain because of the the criminal behavior of prosecutors. Um, his name is Akeem Browder. He's the brother of Khalif Browder, who we all know the tragic story, who was prosecuted, arrested for no reason, and um, unfortunately is not here with us today, but his brother is here to continue his legacy and fight in his name. So Akeem Browder. Good morning, everyone. We are all in solidarity for what we want which is justice, but that word justice has been scrutinized and put through the fire and still justice is not what we want. What we want is for not just one DA to be under the micro uh, microscope. She has long reigned in our history and I don't want to give name recognition to her because she does not deserve any credit for what she has done. But also every other DA in New York, your time has come to an end. Justice will start being changed by us as people power coming together and demanding what we define as justice. Justice is unscathed when it has proof and evidence and facts to back, uh, to back it. But what we don't have now is a justice system that reflects what our community wants. Our community has long since wanted to keep our community safe, to keep our neighborhood safe. But we haven't had that because people who actually are accused of their crimes, whether guilty or innocent, you have the right to be seen as innocent until proven guilty. That's a fair chance or the due process that we are, we are supposed to be promised. But those in our poor communities do not have it. Those that are looked at as black and brown and not considered equal to those with the, the fairer chance of having money, we are the ones that's prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law whether it's guilty or whether it's evidence or not. We've seen that with the, with the five, which is demonized for their name to be Central Park Five and recognize and acknowledges this. But we have seen it over and over again. My brother is not the first or last. Central Park or, the, or Corey Wise, the exonerated five are not the first to, uh, to, be, uh, to go through this. We have seen it over and over again and not just law, uh, in, in Manhattan, but we are coming for you for the DA, and for DA Vance, who will not open his doors for this, but we will force that door open. That's right. We will make sure that their cases are, or all of our cases are heard. That's right. We will make sure that the world knows who we all are. Yes, As speak. innocent people, speak. we are proven, <laughs> we are supposed to be proven guilty, That's not right. defend ourselves, not be beat into submission. What we go through in these facilities, up like an Looking as though we're guilty because we're held in places like Rikers Island. Yes. So the population thinks that we already are guilty. Right. By being beaten, uh, beaten into submission to saying that we are guilty yes. when we know we aren't, when we can prove we aren't, but it's not our job to prove we are innocent. It's your job to That's prove right. that we are guilty. Right. And in that case, you don't have a case if you don't have the facts. Our, our system has put, in, uh, our government has put in New York a, a law forward for a speedy trial and discovery. Our discovery has been wrong ever since the beginning. We are trying to fix this with a new, with a new discovery process that allows us to see our evidence before it's even given, and before it's going to trial. We've had cases after cases that, that suffered like this and we wanted to stop. My brother would still be here today That's if we right. didn't have the system that we have in place. A broken system. Yeah. This system is totally worked right. the way it's supposed to. It's not broken, it needs to be thrown out. Yes, it does. 
We rely on a system to keep our community safe, but that system has never kept our community safe. It's actually done retroactive work, or it's, it's actually done reverse work, keeping our communities in fear, thinking that we can't trust one another, and yet we are brothers and sisters of the same. We are our community, and I'm here to represent my family and my community. We want justice. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. And to, to round us out is Tamika Mallory, who's an activist and organizer, who's always on the front lines for our communities, and we're happy that she's here with us today. Thank you very much. I'm going to be very short because all of what needs to be said has been said here today, and particularly from our public advocate. Um, I really would like to just make two very uh, simple points. The first one is to Cy Vance, the DA here in Manhattan. You were elected by the people. Yes. And the people are telling you that we feel that there was criminal activity in the Manhattan DA office before your time. I want to remind you again of a hero in our community in terms of exonerating people who were wrongfully convicted. And that is the late Ken Thompson right. in Brooklyn. Within the first two months of Ken Thompson becoming the Brooklyn DA, he exonerated over 20 people. Yeah. Over yeah. 20 yeah. people where he, was, where he found that one officer at least was connected to all of the cases. Yeah. You cannot hide behind Morgenthau. Right. You cannot hide behind past reports that were done. Right. You are the district attorney today, That's and we right. are asking for your leadership yes. in this particular situation. There are two people, one in your office today, and another that we believe are complete criminals. That's right. And it is your responsibility to ensure that the people go to bed with comfort, knowing that there are not other individuals locked up because of prosecutorial misconduct. The reality of the situation is that we know, we know that what happened to the Central Park Five is not an unusual case. The exonerated five. That these issues are happening and our people are crying out locked up in jails, yeah, yeah, not yeah. all over this state, but all over this country right. Right. Yeah. for crimes that they did not commit. And the question that we have to keep asking you is what is your opinion? What is your professional opinion about what happened to the exonerated five? If your opinion is that they were guilty, then that's one story and we will deal with you accordingly. But if your opinion, your professional opinion as a district attorney who came to our communities and told us, particularly in Manhattan, right. that you were going to be a progressive DA, yeah. Yeah. a progressive DA, if your opinion, your professional opinion is that there may have been misconduct, yeah. then you have a responsibility yes. to look into other matters within the particular department that Elizabeth uh, Linda Fairstein and Elizabeth Let Letter Letterer, excuse me, Elizabeth Letterer, were in charge of. That's the bottom line. Doesn't take a lot of excitement. It's very simple. Very basic. The second thing is, today we saw a story in the Wall Street Journal, where. Uh, Linda Farstein has not figured out that she needs to stop talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's still talking. Yeah. We want you to understand that many of us, I know for me and also for Jemani and others who are here, this is not the first that we heard and, and understood what happened in that case. Yeah. The movie did not in any way influence us. All it did was told the story that we already knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So when you say that the movie was made up of fabrications, was Ken Burns' documentary also made up of fabrications? Nope. Nope. Was the mother of Yusef Hawkins, who was with, excuse me, Yusef Salam? See, too many cases. Can't even get them all straight. 
the mother of Yusef Salam was with us when her son was a teenager telling us the same facts, That's no right. new things. Right. The movie didn't show us anything new. That's right. Maybe it showed us what Corey Wise went through. Mercy. And perhaps you, a person who should have some moral standing, yep. should look at what Corey Wise went through and rethink what you are saying to us. That's right. exactly. Facts. What we know is that there was only DNA evidence for one person, Mr. Reyes who came forward to say that he actually committed the crime. The other five young men, there's no DNA evidence connecting them to this particular case. And while we understand that all rape victims, all rape survivors need to be respected and there needs to be serious investigation yeah. pinning the crime on five young boys is not the answer. But again, we will put that to the side. We are not here to relitigate what happened to the exonerated five. We are here specifically talking about five, six, ten hundreds that may be locked up today and they need to be free if we cannot find evidence that clearly ties them to any particular crime that, that the Find office down. of the Manhattan District Attorney put forward. That's the bottom line. Thanks. So my position with Linda Farstein is that you need to not only be quiet, but that we don't trust you. Yes. We don't trust you. We don't believe in you. We believe that you are a criminal and those who helped you to convict the exonerated five are criminals and we want the books open up. We want the yes. cases open so that we can right. see with our own eyes what dirty work was happening in your office. Right. We believe that if you lie once, you'll lie again. That's right. And if you, if, you, if you commit and convict people who are innocent, that are easy targets, Black and brown men and women are easy targets. Right. We believe that you will do it again. Yes. Again, simple. This is not difficult things to understand. If the Manhattan District Attorney can't get it, we will help him get it by organizing outside of his office, organizing everywhere that he speaks in this city, and also organizing when he believes that he's going to run for re-election. Shame. Yusef Salam, who was one of the young men who was exonerated as part of the case that we're talking about uh, that he gave to us to, to read out uh, on his behalf today. I was incarcerated because of my skin color, oh. not because of evidence. That's right. I, I had a case manufactured against me yeah. by someone yes. who wanted to make themselves famous. Yeah, yeah. Circumstantial half-truths ruined my youth all because of a prosecutor who hated us for what we looked like. My friends and I lived that lie for years. We suffered that lie for years. We were deprived of our lives for years, all because of racism. It is not enough to say that we'll do better next time. We deserve an independent investigation into the cases of prosecutors involved in our case. They must be held accountable yes. for the wrongdoing yes. they committed and yes. we must bring to light all the other cases of injustice. Yes. Those are the words of Yusuf Salam, and we hear yes. them, and we will carry on that fight for him today. Yes. Are there any questions? No? All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you to thank you. and John Williams, trained uh, community side for police forum, Citizen Action of New York, Vocal New York, Tiffany Caban, Akeem Browder.